So continuing on with our series of one tip for every god in the game, today we cover those pesky warriors. Whether you're a backline diving machine or somehow miss your shackles, this video should hopefully have at least a few tips that can take your warrior gameplay to the next level. Warriors are my favourite class in Smite and I have hundreds of hours playing them alone. Over that time, I've gathered some really useful quick tips that you can implement into your game easily and elevate your warrior arsenal. Hit that sub button and bell if you want to be notified when the next episode of this series comes out and if you're more interested in counters over specific tips for your god, check out my one tip against every smite god series where I discuss how to better play against each god if you're having trouble with them. But without further ado, let's jump in. Smite's anniversary just passed us, but there's still time to get in on the action with today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. It's the three year anniversary of Raid exploding onto the scene and to commemorate, I'm counting down my top three most badass champions in Raid. At number three, I have Roshkard the Hightower. I just had to include an over the top knight slash paladin design because they're always so cool in games like this and he's definitely the most badass sacred order champion there is. Next up, we're going to the Dwarven Kingdom to showcase Torm in the Cold, a chillingly badass dwarf design that looks like he hits hard. And finally, the most badass looking champion in Raid, in my opinion, is Jintaro from the Shadow Kid faction. The Shogun vibes are real with this one. Raid's champions honestly never disappoint with their designs, and one of my favourite things to do in Raid is summoning more champions at the portal to fight with me and my team. You never know who you're gonna get. With it being the third anniversary of Raid, there's a ton of new events going on like free gifts for everyone, new champion releases, PvP tournaments, and more. There really never has been a better time to get started in Raid. New players can hit the link in the description or scan the QR code in the top right to get a free starter pack worth almost $40 in game, including not one, not two, but three free champions. And since it's Raid's birthday, there's even more free stuff going around. Enter the promo code 3 years Raid in game to get everything. Claim your rewards in your inbox in game for the next 30 days only, and I will catch you guys in the raid. So kicking things off with Achilles. Make sure you're always making use of his insane AA cancels. This is where half of his crazy damage actually comes from. Physical basic attacks scale at 100% of power compared to 20% for magical basic attacks in game, and so AA cancelling on warriors and assassins specifically is a great way to boost your damage. For Achilles, his 3 is one of few abilities in the game that can provide a double AA reset since it's multiple hits. Just cancel a targeter once you cast the 3, basic attack, then fire the projectile and repeat. Achilles 2 is also surprisingly good as an AA cancel and allows you to keep your damage high even when using the 2 which does no damage. Amaterasu. Pay attention to your passive and one aura. Ama has a lot of obviously strong things in her kit like the 2 second stun ult, but what's often overlooked is choosing the right aura from your 1 and keeping your passive stacked up. For the aura, you almost always want to be in power aura if possible, only speed aura when rotating, returning to lane, chasing or running from a fight, that kind of stuff. Anytime you're just boxing or diving or doing an objective, keeping in power aura to help your team burn down the objective or enemy players is always useful. As for the passive, this 10% damage boost is AoE, not just on the target you land the three basics on. For this reason, you should always stack this up on the front minion of the wave before firing your mirror for wave clear for the 10% damage boost. Again, always have this on FG and Gold Fury if you're trying to take it. 10% boosted damage for the whole team towards FG on just a passive is really nice. Use it. Bologna. Bologna's wave clear is already some of the best in the game due to bludgeon, but the way you can get an even bigger clear advantage is by clipping the enemy solo laner with the spin damage as you go for the wave. Damaging enemy gods near minions causes them to aggro to you for a few seconds and so this groups up all 6 minions around you for the follow up slam damage and cleave auto attacks. Otherwise you'd just be hitting 3 minions, either the back 3 or the front 3. This is pretty much the fastest clear you're ever going to get in the early game of solo bar a few specific things like a bracken 3. Chuck. If you're ever chasing or boxing someone and need that bit of extra damage after throwing your axe, make sure you use your 3 before using your 2. This cancels the teleport to axe mechanic and allows you to just 2 around you and stay on the enemy rather than TPing away. We've all seen it happen one time or another. Plus, using axe into rain can double stack the slow and attack speed slow if the enemy is within range of both reigns. Kukulan. When in Berserk mode, it's often fine to just use the ult for a bit of poke or to clear a wave, since the cooldown is so short that it will be up by the next time you use rage mode anyway, and of course you lose the ability if you don't use it in that rage mode, you may as well use it before the timer runs out, even if it's not the ideal situation for it. Erlang Shen. So, recently reworked, and I feel like the turtle cancel isn't even tech worth teaching anymore since they lost the knockup. It's very early after the rework for Erlang at the time of making this video, and so specific tips for his new style of gameplay is difficult. However, he has some of the most insane single target damage and boxing I've seen, so use that in lane and get every single totem slash side happy there is in between waves, and get a farm lead in solo. Also, the age old Erlang trick of taunt first still applies to the root because it doesn't DR, but of course, no knockup anymore, so it's not quite as good. 
Gilgamesh. When chasing enemies with Gilga, you basically want to always end up with the enemy having no movement ability left and being stuck in your ult. That's the ideal situation for Gilgamesh. The best way to do this is to blink engage instead of jumping. This is a pretty common knowledge tip on junglers and solos since you can follow their jump with yours if you blink in rather than using your own jump. But on Gilga specifically, you can ult them once they jump and then immediately follow with your three and as soon as that damage procs on them, they get bought back to the middle of the ult and it's off to the races at that point. Guan Yu. When ulting, Guan can choose at any time to jump off the horse and apply the stun. Doing this early instead of letting the full channel play out will cost you damage, but often will gain you the surprise factor. If you do the full channel, everyone knows the stun is coming right after and can be ready on beads, CC immune ults, shell, etc. But if you're a good Guan Yu, you be unpredictable with your dismounts and sometimes do it pretty much instantly when the enemy is unprepared and they take the full stun to the face. Hercules. Early boxing is free real estate for Hercules. He's not a god you think of when you think strong basic attacks, but specifically in the first few levels of the laning phase, Hercules passive gives 21 power at level 5, which isn't insane for his abilities, but given physical auto attack scale at 100%, that can add a lot of damage to his early game boxing that most people don't expect from an ability focused god. Combine this with the 1.5 times damage hit at the end of his chain, and people can get bursted way faster than they expected just by Hercules autos. Horus. Abuse Horus's early ability damage. So this one is, I guess, a bit of a reverse on Hercules. Horus's base damages on his 1 and 2 are really high for a warrior, especially for a more supportive warrior. The 2 alone at level 1 does 130 base damage and reduces props by 10, so follow-up hits do even more. Definitely use his early game damage and play aggressive in that laning phase. King Arthur. Arthur's unique basic attacks will lunge up to 15 units when used. This allows for great AA cancels that actually give you extra mobility and juking potential in between your abilities since the lunge is often fast enough and far enough to dodge abilities with. This 15 unit lunge also adds 15 units of range to any of your abilities when done right and cast beforehand. This is especially useful on his 4A, the blue ultimate, which can extend the range from 45 to 60 on the stun and damage, a 25% range increase just by using Arthur's unique AA cancels. Mulan. The 3 is good to use even at point blank range because of the untarget ability that you get for a pretty long time during the animation. It can be used to avoid bid damage ults if you're good enough and can predict, but even if it just dodges one of the enemy's basic abilities, that's still good good value. Nike. Don't be afraid to get overly aggressive on Nike. She has insane poke with the 1, a great engage with the leap, and two great safety abilities with the 2's barrier that blocks all ranged basic attacks, and of course the massive HP shield and slow on the ultimate. Often Nike can get away with dives, even under towers, where other warriors simply would die for their hubris. With Nike though, that hubris is rewarded more often than not. Odin. When burning objectives, always use Odin's 3 first, just to make sure... When burning objectives, always use Odin's 3 to just the first rune instead of the normal 3 runes for the stun. One rune gives the whole team a big burst of attack speed, which, assuming you're a tank or bruiser Odin and not just full damage, will definitely be more overall damage than the objective than going for full runes. Even in team fights, if your ADC or basic attack jungler is nearby, giving them 30% attack speed can be more value than a lot of other choices on Odin's 3. It's definitely an underrated part of his kit, and I always see Odin players only ever using the 3 rune stun when the attack speed is definitely worth in certain situations. Osiris. Focus less on clearing waves with abilities. Osiris has really strong basic attacks with 2 cleave hits that can often deal with minions really well, while you use the 1-2 combo to poke the enemy god instead. Of course, you can still use your abilities on the wave, especially if you want to get extra fast clear, but it's less necessary on Osiris, and you're often better poking with the abilities since they're ranged and the 2 confirms off the 1, whereas basic attacks are harder to confirm lots of. On the wave though, AoE basic attacks definitely do the trick. Shiver. When using Shiva's ultimate, you should almost always do the amplification step twice in between your step of choice for damage and healing. When going for full damage, the damage is the same for 2323 as it is for 3333, but you also get a bit of extra healing and extra range with the former over the latter. However, if you're going for full healing, there's a choice to be made. 2121 has the extra range component which might be useful, but 1111 does 10% more mana heal overall. The health heal is the same on both, so you pretty much have to decide whether you want more total resources restored or a bit more range to hit more allies with the heal and some small damage from the amplification step if enemies are around you while you're trying to heal. Sun Wukong. A bit like Nike, you're infinitely safe and get away with aggressive and risky plays that other warriors can't. 
The bird is one of the best escapes in the game, and you can even use the ox if you need to knock someone out of the way. Plus, the ult is literally a get out of jail free card to buy time for your teammates, wait for your own cooldowns, or even just heal up a little bit. Make sure to be aggressive, poke with the one a lot, and go for tower dives, proxies, safe invades, etc. Wukong can handle it. Tier. Both of Tier's fearlesses can be cancelled early by using Power Cleave. This is mainly useful for you if you whiff Assault Stance fearlesses half the time like I do. You can cancel the animation before it puts you two out of position like into an enemy tower or locks you into standing there for the full duration. For the guard stance fearless, it's more practically useful since you can cancel the long post hit delay to guarantee the follow up power cleave while the enemy is still airborne, but the same applies here too. If you miss guard stance fearless, you can cancel it to limit the pain. And finally, Vamana. This one has to be the instant dash cancel. Vamana's dash is really long but cancelable at any point, and I mean literally any point after you cast it. Fearless at least has a small delay before you can power cleave out of it. The mana dash can be instantly cancelled for follow up basic attacks, and I guess since the Erlang nerf, this is the closest thing we have to the turtle cancel in the game now, since it works in a similar way. But that's all I got for one tip for every warrior in Smite. Let me know what class I should cover next out of Guardians, Mages, and Hunters, and don't forget to drop a like before you leave. Catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day, and peace out, you nerds.